that moment. I was like, I'm mad at my baby. And I just knew I needed to make a change. Hey, this is Neeti. And what you're about to hear today is a very special episode with one of the members from our portfolio program. We call these Sensei Sessions. These interviews are designed to give you a perspective about what you can achieve with the right strategies and execution. I hope you enjoy this episode. And for free resources, check out our show notes section to see how you can build and scale your portfolio. So let's get members of the panel. Um, you know, I'm like challenged with the, all the spotlighting. Ah, there's going to magically appear, I think, right? That is Miss <laughs> Danny doing Miss Danny, best. thank you. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to introduce members of our panel and have them introduce themselves. And I've got questions for each of them. So kind of like um, round robin questions for everybody. And then we'll kind of do more questions at the end. I think, are we missing? No, we got everyone. We have four members. I'm going to start with Eileen because I'm because you're right there at the very beginning. And I know that you've been in our community for quite a while and it's been awesome to watch you grow. But let's kind of assume that people don't know who you are. <laughs> sure. And how far you've come. Uh, where do you live and what do you do outside of real estate? Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Hi, everyone. I'm Eileen Moore. Um, I live in New York City. And um, my background is in public relations and communications. So I did that for more than 20 years. Um, and if anybody is in PR, it's just, it's, it's a lot. So, um, it was taking a toll on sort of like my mental health and personal life. And, uh, yeah, so I quit in 2022, um, and started freelancing. So kind of had enough contacts in the industry to pick and choose jobs here and there and make my own hours. And, um, so that was really nice. And, um, I think like at the beginning of last year, I was sort of like freelancing a lot, maybe like 30 hours, but like it's slowly like I'm taking fewer and fewer jobs because I'm focusing more and more and more on the real estate. Um, and hopefully soon I'll just be doing the real estate investing full time and I won't have to take any more um, side. Like now the PR is my side hustle. You know, the real yeah, estate okay. investing is my business. Um and so that's kind of an exciting like mind shift that I I've love had. that. Eileen, can you explain to me like how because I used to, I mean PR and I get it. I'm kind of in that world as well. I know, yeah. But um how, when did so you're taking clients, you're it's your income. We yeah. make income. When did you start to 60, 40, 40, 60 that? Like when did you like make it more realistic? But when did the scale tip to the other side? Yeah. You're saying? Yeah. yeah. Um I would say there were a couple of different factors at play. And the first was, um, you know, I'm not cash flowing a ton right now, you know, but I think um, it was probably like mid last year. I thought like, okay, I'm just going to like take a few months to really focus on this, not take any more like outside clients with PR um, just for a couple of months and see how it goes. I would say like mid last year, it kind of tipped. The other factor in this is um, I am fortunate enough to have a spouse who now gets it. And mm -hmm. I think we've had this conversation a lot and I've had conversations with just people on the side often. Um, my husband is actually in the group and he's just a lurker, but we talk about, um, you know, he'll, oh, I saw so-and-so's <clears throat> post. At the beginning of my journey, I... I don't want to say that he didn't think that what I was doing was worthwhile, but I just don't think that he saw the vision. And so like once I started to, you know, talk about, okay, well, look at what this property is going to be in five years and in 10 years. And meanwhile, it's appreciating and the tenants are paying my rent. Like I'm not, it's like a free house, you know? And so mm -hmm. I think as I got him to understand the process, he was more, I guess, like open-minded to saying, you know what, like, that's, that's good. Like I have a lot of the, you know, day to day. Yeah. Total lurker spouse, uh, not in a creepy way. He's a great guy. Um, but like, you know, as I was kind of putting the numbers in front of him, cause he's a numbers person, you yeah. know, and, you know, talking about in 10 years, I'm going to have this just with these five properties that I have so far. That's it, just five. And I'm not stopping at five. And so like that kind of really helped him because it's like, okay, he's, of course, he's, we've got retirement funds and, you know, all that sort of traditional stuff. But now I feel like our roles are kind of like he's doing the day-to-day -day primarily, 
financial wise. And I'm doing a lot of the long-term generational wealth building. Um, and so it's kind of, but it took him like a little while, you know, and like to read the successes of other people. And then um, he got very excited when we started talking about the real estate professional status and how that could help like offset tax benefits. His- yeah. taxable income. Yeah. He was like, yes. wait a minute, this is going to help me. And you know, my income, like, yes, yes. yes. It's going to. And it's like, it's okay. Thing, right? yeah. So then like that helped him get on board too. But I think that that's a common thing. And I, I see like some head nods, like from Alan, to, you know, I don't know if you've had the same experience, but like, sometimes your spouses are just like, wait, what are you doing? Like, why aren't you just buying turnkey properties? It seems like it's so much <laughs> easier, you know? And it's like, you created. they're not like creating any equity, you know? So it's, yeah. Yeah. I explain things to people, but sometimes like they just kind of don't get it. And I'm sure everybody has somebody in their circle sure. that just doesn't really yeah. get it. So he had a mindset shift, which was, I think, great for my journey. Yeah. So, and the, oh. the thing that I love about, this specific journey is the cash flow. And I say this all the time is I hate focusing on the cash flow because that is the last component that is the least lucrative component of this strategy. So if you're cash flowing positive, I mean, you're making so much more money. You don't even know about it. Your yeah. property will have easy 40, 50 K in equity. Each property yeah. you're borrowing is yeah. easy 40, 50 K in equity. You can sell it anytime you need money. That's yours, right? Mm-hmm. Second, the tax benefits are incredible. I incredible. would add that to your income. That's your income. Yes. Yeah. Right? So that you didn't already, have before. Yeah. And, we've already started to, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. And, and appreciation. That's all I was saying. The, 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 and the properties, they are, 3% is the most conservative appreciation number that you can use. And it hasn't been 3% in years. It's been way more, right? And that's just the money that you're making without having to invest that money, right? Because you're appreciating on the full amount of the property, not on the equity. If the property is 100K, the appreciation that you're making is on 100K. It's money you didn't even invest. It's money that you borrowed. Yeah. Appreciation is on somebody else's money. And that it's so many ways of making money with this one strategy and you don't even know it. (laughs) So it's really it's like it is magic. You know, I love when you, you know, you walk through the process, Palak, and you when you talk about, you know, the refi and like getting cash back and like this is where the magic happens, you know, that's such a great part of it. But the whole process feels like magic. And I wish I had started it way, way sooner. And I definitely agree with you. I I think that I had, when I entered into the real estate and real estate investing world, you think of like, oh, rent every month and that'll be great. And that's where the- And that's that's good. You need that too. Right. Yes, of course. Yeah. You're not going to, you don't want to do a deal where you're going to be negative cash flow each month, but if you're going to be a hundred bucks per month, that's great. You're yeah. making so much money in other yeah. ways. You have yeah. you don't even have an idea. Yes. So you mentioned five properties currently. So you started yes. at the beginning of last year. You have five properties already. What is yep. your vision? And you you talked about more, right? Gen- like the the wealth of your family in the future, generational wealth. But like, what is the vision for you? So my vision from a practical standpoint, and just like the numbers of things, I'd like to have. 15 properties at this time next year. So I did kind of five in my first year. I want to ramp that up. Um, And so I'm really focused right now on scaling. So love it. I said it here. This is being recorded. Um, So yeah, so that's sort of my vision. And um, to just be able to focus 100% um, like I said, on the investing. And I always joke that I want to, uh, I want to fly business class every time I get on an airplane. Yes. <laughs> yes. Love that. That. Speak it into yes. existence. Right. And what is the yeah. value of your portfolio right now? Just so we have um, kind of a base. 1.4 million. Oh my God. Yeah. It's every time I hear it, it's, it's up by 200 K. I'm so excited. Yeah. Is it because yeah. of appreciation is that one <laughs> no it's because of aquas she keeps buying them and i mean this is the and- arv this is the arv yeah. and two of them are like you know they're don't 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 backpedal what is they're underway backpedal? i'm just saying <laughs> okay That's it's so 1.4 
Okay. One point I need to be 1.5 when I get some refined. I will let you know. You'll yeah. be the first to know. Let me know. Okay. All right. Every uh, time Eileen has done a refi, I, I don't want to say every time. Most times I hear her say, oh, I was expecting this much, but I got all this much more money every time. That's because I mean, we're so conservative with our numbers. Yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. And it always surprises me. And it's like, I love it. It's, it's like Christmas. I love, <laughs> I love it. It's like Christmas. I love that. Okay. Let's go to Alan now. <clears throat> Same question to you. Uh, where do you live? What do you, oh, where do you invest? H hang on, Eileen. Where do you invest? Did you tell me? Did oh, no, Jacksonville, Jacksonville, okay. Florida. Okay, gotcha. Yes. All right, Alan, where do you live? Where are you investing? What do you, uh, hang on, mm. what do you do? What do you do? Where do you live? Let's start there. <laughs> what do you do? Where do you live? Hi, guys, I'm Alan, and I, <clears throat> I live in Chicago, but I work in Seattle. So that's another story for another time. My market is Bloomington, Illinois. And so I just closed on in December my first property and I'm receiving rent now from my first tenant. So I am in search of deal number two. Amazing. Um, what do you do for a living, Ellen? Oh, I'm a plastic surgeon and I specialize in hair transplant surgery. <laughs> <laughs> so when when I say plastic surgeon, I'm sure people think, wow, that guy's got a lot I of money. I want to be your friend. Yeah, yeah we, we, are, we want to be your friend. Oh, yeah, look at all, all, the, all the women in their forties are like, we want to be your friend. They're like, we all sat up. Like, wait a minute. Okay. I'm sorry, Alan. You were saying that people think that you have a lot of money. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and the thing about it is when you live in a high cost of living city, like I do, you end up, you guys all know what lifestyle creep is, right? You end up buying a lot of liabilities and not a lot of assets. And so for years now, I've been thinking about how am I going to change this? How am I going to get assets instead of buying things that take money out of my pocket? And more and more and more, the blogs that I've been reading, especially even physician blog, blogs, have been talking about real estate. Mm -hmm. So I have been literally studying real estate for about five years now. I even coached my brother into buying a short-term rental in a vacation area in Illinois, but I couldn't figure out how to get going on this process. And so when I joined in August, I had my doubts. So all of you who are new here, I had my doubts, but I wanted to latch onto something. And, and coming here, teaching me the systems and processes has got me going. And within three months I had my first property and now I'm getting, I have a renter and she's moving in next week. So awesome. Congratulations. exciting. It's only been since uh, August, but it's coming along well and I'm in search of property number two. And it's just a matter of finding it before I uh, yeah. pull the trigger on that one. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, and so where's the ARV on that property? And then what is your vision for what you want in the future? So in my market, I was lucky. I was able to buy a property for sixty-two thousand, and the ARV is one fifty-five. Oh my god! So that's that where is I'm so at right good. Now. Yeah, and I was lucky too. The rehab cost. Zach was just talking about rehab costs in Jacksonville. I was able to rehab this for forty thousand, and uh, get it right that's ready. That's really so. great around this time. That is amazing. Amazing. Okay, so vision. Did you tell me the vision? Did I miss it? Like the hope is to like grow to something. Yeah, I'd like to have five properties this year, and. Uh, I don't know how many doors. Hopefully that's more than five doors. Yeah. And I'd like to do, like Eileen said, at least five properties a year. Yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations. Thank Ellen, you. thank you. Kendra, can, thank you. Can, oh, go ahead. Cheryl, can I just ask one more question to Alan? Of course. To Kendra. Could you take a minute and kind of unpack a little bit about the thing you talked about, lifestyle creep and buying liabilities, because we don't talk about it enough. And I think it's so important that you brought it up. And, and you're a... You're a higher, you're a doctor, you're a high earner. And people always think that if you have good in income, that automatically means you're building wealth, but that's not true. Oh, that's so true. You know, the expression is so true. It doesn't matter how much you make, it's how much you keep. And um, you can get caught up in keeping up with the Joneses so easily, you don't even realize whether it's private schools, the cars you drive, the house you live in, the clothes you wear, the handbags you carry, et cetera, et cetera, it just gets out of control really quickly. And before you know it, you're surrounded by all kinds of great things, things that deserve to be on a Netflix, you know, reality show, and you don't have any assets. So getting into this and switching your mindset, I loved it when uh, Pollock said she doesn't shop for handbags or she doesn't look for things. She starts looking at properties. <laughs> she said that on one of the very first calls that I jumped in on, I thought, wow, what a mindset. Yeah. What a way I, to live. What a, what a way to think. I, I bought it. It was, so we never had money for like a big diamond ring. 
right? But then when we made money, I went and I, I invested, invested in a in a diamond ring. And I was like, I want to return this because I would have bought a property with this money. This was not right. I'm never doing this again. <laughs> 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 I could put a down payment on a bar for, you know, in the money that I, I put into that. And yeah, so that I, I totally um, understand this. And it's it's hard to remember this again and again, right? Because mm-hmm. you see everything else happening around you, you're constantly being bombarded with things that you should be buying, should be buying to, mm-hmm. because you deserve them or what have a good life. Yeah. Have a good life. I worked so hard. I deserve to mm-hmm. spend money on. Yes. Yeah, man. What a good point. Alan, yeah. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. Kendra. Hello. Hello. Okay. What, where do you live? Excuse me. What do you do? Uh, hello. Hi. Um, okay. So I'm Angeles, and um, I'm a professional makeup artist in the entertainment industry. Um, and uh, during COVID, I can't even remember the year, probably in 2022, I um, closed down. I had an indie beauty brand that I, that I created and, and had, so I closed that down. And um, truthfully, I, I, my focus is on real estate. I am a real estate investor. I kind of joke now that I, I've gone from painting faces to painting houses, not literally, but it's like, so much. I, yeah, I just, cause I was thinking about it the other day too, when the Oscars were on and I was like, I'm, I'm not doing anybody today and I'm so happy. And if you told me five years ago or 10 years ago that I'd be like, like, I'm not doing that. I, I, I would have just been like devastated. Like, like, something's wrong. My career is going down the tanks, um, down the tubes. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but I love this so much that um, this is where my focus is. This is what I want to do. Um, I kind of veered off. What was I, what else was I supposed to Oh no, to that do? was great. So, no, we really yeah. appreciate that. So where <laughs> are you investing and what properties have you acquired? And, the and what celebrities <laughs> have you done makeup for? Oh yeah, 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 for sure. You don't really want to know all that, do you? <laughs> I I, I, I did not do. know that about you. We've we've hung yeah. out for two days yeah. in person at the bar. I, know. Con, I still didn't know that lot. about you. Yeah. I know because so can I just share something funny because you say that and yeah I I really do have a, a resume of of a lot of celebrities but it was so funny being with all of you guys like I'd see people and it'd be like Eileen Effie <laughs> Sophie like to you like That's you awesome. guys got. Me, like, I, I've never liked that around the celebrities, but like you guys are my rock star celebrities. And I and I was like laughing at myself later because I was like, oh, my God, there's Paul. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know, but it, it's a really big deal to me. That is so, funny. so, yeah. So, I mean. You guys are, you know, you guys oh my are my God. world these days. Yes. I love yeah. it. I love it. Well, maybe at the end, you'll tell us who the celebrities are that you've done. I I mean, look, truthfully, I've worked with everybody from Cindy Crawford, Justin Timberlake, um, you know, like, like I've worked with a whole span of people. So it's a, it's a decent resume, a a lot of amazing, talented people, you know, a a panel of high achievers. I know really always, I always very, very fortunate, just really, really fortunate. And I, and I loved all of that, but I love, I love this. And I also see this, you know, I will say this, there are a lot of colleagues of mine who fall into even like what Alan was saying. And, you know, everybody was so worried about wearing the coolest clothes, having the the designer bags and the shoes and the whole thing. And they live in apartments and they, they don't like, I'm fortunate. I own my own home. Mm -hmm. And I like, I never fell into that trap. And these are people that are, that are like aging out of the business because it gets very challenging at a certain point to live, you know, cause it's a, it's a tough industry. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just physically and emotionally and, you know, it's, this is just such a, this is the way to, to set yourself up for the future. Yeah. So you, you know, I hate to sound morbid, but so you don't outlive your money Yeah. because if you're not paying attention, exactly. that is a real, yeah, that's a real concern. So, you know, it's all good and fine to be fabulous, you know, in your 30s or your 40s. But it's like, that's going to be so fabulous in your 70s and your 80s. It's like, you don't want to be, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I hope that doesn't sound awful. But, 
you no. know, not do this. No. Do. What is your vision, Kendra? Like, what do you plan to do oh. with, after this first depart after this first um, <clears throat> property? What happens now? Well, on on a little side note of that, this is so addictive. <laughs> as soon as my, I went um, under contract and I, and we were accepted and everything, I like I was really trying to remember what Pollock says. It's just like you know, it's like just you need to focus and do what's in front of you, you know, most important first next step. But at the same time, there's this part of my, in, of my head just kind of going, I want another one. Let's find another one. <laughs> you know? So it was like, okay, calm down. Um, but I'd like, what I'm doing for vision is I, I want to acquire a portfolio uh, at 1.5 million um, this year. And I want to get all of my learnings and make my mistakes and do all of that because I want to scale next year and do 10 properties. I'd like to, I feel like it's sort of conservative and maybe I should be less conservative, but I want over 10 million within five years. And I think that's possible. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. Love it. Love that. So good. So, so good. Okay, Rami, let's go to you. <laughs> this has been so good. All right, Rami, where are you? Where do you live and what do you do? Hi, everyone. So uh, this is Rami and I do this with my wife, Sarah. She's not with us today, but um, she's always with me in, in, the, in the process. We live in Sacramento, California, and we invest all the way in Michigan. Um, we uh, both are pharmacists and um, in different fields of pharmacy, I work in, um, I have a background in regulatory affairs and retail pharmacies, specialty pharmacies, and Sarah works in the corporations side. Um, she manages a whole regional team of um, an army of pharmacists under her in a very esteemed um, big hospital system here. And um, a little bit of background, we got married in 2021. And um, we wanted to travel and do all the fun stuff together. But then we hit a road, roadblock when we both figured, found out that our jobs is taking a lot of our time and mental health and all that. Besides, we're double income, kind of also high earners, but the taxes are killing it. Yeah. So, um, and we're not, we're not we're not doing financially okay, actually. So we we decided that in 2022, we're gonna do, this is gonna be our financial year. And we're gonna focus on how we're gonna build our financial freedom. Uh, we stumbled into so many things. Like we was like, because of our professions, first, we're not trained to do things like outside of the box. We're trained to do like everything very structural. Um, you go to job to, to work, you work, and then you get your pay, and then that's it. Um, we're very good at that, but outside of that, we're not. But we know that we can. So we looked into so many other things, like random things, like we rented our backyards, we rented our pool, we wanted to be a distributor for um, a, a commercial thing. Sarah, at some point, is like, you know that we can we can use our cars for ads for other people and we can make like money. <laughs> like, Oh my God, no, let's stop there. Uh, <laughs> so, and um, so we decided to try the entrepreneurship journey and um, Sarah found the portfolio program on open spaces and she resonated a lot with Palak's story. And she's like, Oh my God, this is just like us. So we joined the program and we were so happy with that because that was the best decision. We, um, we did a lot of like thinking and we, the process was very rewarding joining the program, um, learning, exploring. It's something outside of the box, but we actually made it happen. Um, and on the same time, it's because I, I have a passion for real estate. So she's like, this is going to be yours, but let me help you with this. So we both dove into the real estate and we, we were able to um, start there. And the same time, because the goal is to quit our jobs, but we still love our profession. We are pharmacists and we love helping people in that healthcare journey. So we came with an idea of how can we make 
a business out of our profession. Um, we created a company um, and we called it Elike Health. And that company also is a healthcare system that can help patients who are struggling in our very complex health system um, to navigate and get their health on track. So we kind of created these two companies at the same time. And while we're still in our jobs, because we need to supplement that, we don't have investors, we don't have like seed money. So we still have to have that income to maintain that. Um, so what, because of the structure of our jobs, Sarah stayed in her full-time job and I was able to um, switch to part-time. So now I'm... Um, Instead of um, working full time, I'm working like two days a week um, to focus health, the the health, the healthcare system, and the uh, real estate. Oh, that's awesome! Gosh, yeah, this is such an amazing group. It really is. So, um, Rami, <laughs> what what properties do you have right now? And you are investing. You said in Michigan, right? Yes. Okay. What's so your invest- total portfolio ARV now? So we have so far four properties, um, and it's about 700 ARV total. Um, it's, you just uh, need one more to cross them, or maybe two more to cross them. Yes, again. yes, yes. I, we just placed an offer yesterday a on a house. So we're, we're on it. We're on it. It's going to happen. Yes. That's <laughs> awesome. And what is your vision? I mean, you've got a lot on your plate, definitely a lot on your plate, but you want to make that plate bigger, I think. So what is the vision for the real estate part? Um, Short term, we uh, this year we want to finish the 10 10 properties mark for this year. I just want to have that 10. Uh, We're not so far from that. And maybe long term is I was uh, I don't know. I told the other day um, I want to turn these properties into a hotel someday. And staying at that hotel because <laughs> I love hotels. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And you can do what you want when it's your own business. That is the beauty of it. I love that. I love that, Rami. Thank you so much. Very original. Definitely. <laughs> Tasha, welcome to the Sensei panel. It is so good to see you. Welcome, welcome. So we're just going around. Um, we're still kind of in the beginning part of this. Will you please introduce yourself and tell us what you do outside of real estate? What's your day job? Sure. Wait, where, where you live as well. I don't know if I sure. My name is Tasha. Hi. Welcome. Hello. hello. <laughs> um, sorry, I don't know if I've met a lot of you guys. It's been a while since um, I've been on a call. Life happened. Um, and, but I'm one of the pros. Um, I try to chime in when I can on the in the Facebook group. But for those of you who have not met me, hello. Um, my day job is uh, I'm an attorney. Um, I work for, I'm a partner at a large law firm um, focusing on intellectual property litigation. Um, I also am a mom of two. My oldest is eight and my youngest is almost two now, which is kind of crazy because I joined this program when I was on maternity leave. Um, And I live in Houston, Texas, um, and I invest here in Houston, but the, my burrs are in Memphis, Tennessee, which is where my, my husband's from. And what's your total portfolio size, ARVs, if you add up all the ARVs? Sure. It's a little north of 1.1 million right now. Um, And then additionally, um, not the subject of this um, call, but uh, we also host on Airbnb through rental arbitrage, meaning we lease properties and then rent it out. Um, And that's about an additional $3 million that we um, manage as well. Amazing. Your Amazing. births crossed a million already. That is pretty incredible. Tasha, yeah. what is your vision? Um, just out of just sort of, I know you're busy, busy, like super busy, busy, like the job, <laughs> the kids, and then all of the real estate. But what's your vision as you're growing what you're growing on this real estate side? Um, I don't know what the portfolio amount would be. Um, but, you know, we want to be somewhere in the 30 to 50 range of single family or doors, I should say, door range. I think uh, that is sort of the where we hit the financial freedom type number approximately. Um, what's your lifestyle vision? Like what's yeah, the one sure. thing that you want to have in life? I think I would want to 
have the be able to take summer off um, with the kids. Mm. You know, I have young kids, so it's going to be a long time before I'm off the school year schedule. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. And so I think one of the things that's always been a long term vision for me is to be able to, uh, you take know, travel and take the summer off and spend time with the kids. Yeah. So this will be, I'm really glad you brought that up. I don't talk about this enough and I should, because it just helps, you know, build, if you have something in mind, then you kind of have something to shoot for. So I always like to talk about it. This is our third year where we're doing, taking the summer and going out of the country to, and we're originally from India. So we'll spend a chunk of time in India and then combine it with a different country and have, and every time we've done that, I notice my kids come back with a whole different level of confidence when they're back. And it's, I didn't think that was going to be the outcome. I wanted to do it because I never got to travel as a kid. And so I wanted to, you know, you always want to give your kids what you didn't have. And I feel like it's because when you go live in different places, it kind of makes you feel like the world is just made up of different people and we're all just okay, just the way we are. And sometimes we need that reminder by experiencing it as opposed to somebody just telling you. And so I love that as, as one of your goals, that is my favorite thing. I love that. And I think we, you're right. We don't talk about that enough. And we don't talk about it enough. Have kids. You can only really travel in the times when everyone else is traveling, like the summer and the Christmas and the spring breaks and all that. So to be able to take off and enjoy that time with no reservations is amazing. Definitely. Yes. And, and the way we build this business is even if you have to do something, you can get it done no matter where you are. Yeah. It, you know, that it doesn't matter. So I love that. I have a, I have a question for everyone. Cheryl, is it okay if I ask this? Okay. So I've been thinking about something that I want to bring up and I want you guys to weigh in on. Um, oftentimes I hear people who have high income jobs or busy lives or um, kids, they say, I want to invest in real estate. I know it's the right thing to do. I'm just not ready right now. I'm just, or I want to do this. I have all the, all, all the support at my fingertips. I'm just not ready to pull the trigger now. What's, what would you say to them to, what was the thing that made you decide it's going to be now? For me, it was, well, I want to spend time with my kids now while they're little, not wait till, you know, I, I work my way through my fears and work my way through everything. And then I already missed the time I wanted to spend with them. And that was like my reason why I had to do it right then. And sometimes it has to be an emotional reason to push us to take these decisions, right? So what has been, what is it that, that you would say to someone who who needs to start, but there's just something that's stopping them. And it's usually not tactical. It's mindset. It's related to our fears. It's related to um, our beliefs. Who wants to go first? I'll, I'll at least start. Um, for me, I will, I'll start with at least, you know, what made me take action. Um, I looked up. And the thing that um, I looked up and I was like, oh, I said I was going to do that a year ago. Crap. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, you know, I, I can lose me personally can lose track of time very easily. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and let time fly by. And so the yeah. the the oh, shoot, I said that a year ago. Right. Um, it was the realization for me. Um, and then you know, as far as what I would tell somebody is, you know, if you're not mindful of that, that's exactly what will happen. And you'll still be in the exact same place. If you're not happy with where you are right now, um, you know, what or what actions are you taking to correct that? And mm -hmm. if you're not happy right now, why wait a year? Yes. Brilliant. I can, I can chime in also. Um, 
So I'll tell like a personal story that might make me cry. When I was working at my corporate job, I was working at Spotify and I would put my, I would have dinner with my son, put him to bed. Like he was six at the time. And um, then I would go back on my computer and work until one in the morning, two in the morning, insane. And then I'd wake up at six and start working before he got up. And anyway, one night doing bedtime, he wanted me to read a second story to him. And I got mad at him. Like I got mad at my six-year-old son because he wanted me to read a second story. And I was like, doesn't he know I have to go back, you know, and log on and I need to get this, you know, draft or this thing to my boss. And I'm like, oh, like, you know, like how dare, you know, I wasn't really saying that I obviously was right. not saying this to my child, but I was just thinking like, oh, like I got to get down. I have to log back on. I have to go, 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 go. And like, really gets me emotional because yeah. in that, that moment, I was like, I'm mad at my baby. And I just knew I needed to make a change. And I had been stalking the real estate. I had been in that place, Alec, where it's like what you said of like, okay, you know, what's keeping you from doing it? Mm -hmm. There were a ton of things keeping me from doing it. And the first yeah. thing, you know, was kind of the nervousness. Um, the other thing was I just didn't even realize what was possible. Like I live in New York. It's like so expensive. And, um, but that was it. That was like, okay, I'm going to, I need to leave my job. And I knew that, but I also just like kept delaying leaving my job and kept delaying. Me. And I said, if I don't make a bold move really quickly, like I'm just, I'll be at this job for another year and I'll be like making really sad decisions mm -hmm. uh, when I could be spending time with my child. And I don't know, that just like that feeling of like getting mad at my kid because he was preventing me from like going back and logging on. It just, I realized that my priorities were like really You're working mad. hard. Yeah. So anyway, I will also say that the nervousness that I had is like, that's what this group is for, you know? And that's what I tell people that you know, you can be nervous about it and like, oh, I don't know how to do that. Oh my God, you're so like, friends will tell me like, you're so brave. And it's like, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of, bit of being like brave and ballsy, but it's also about having the network and like Palak and Nitty have created this thing where it's like, you know, everything is there for you. All the steps are there, follow them and trust in the process. And like, and that's it. So yeah. It's like uh, those, um, what are they called? Buttresses? That mm, support a building up, right? Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You you put those around you so you can build up. Yes, for sure. That's what that's what the group is. I'm gonna have to keep a box of tissues here I know, whenever we have a sensei oh, panel because you made me cry. I know. <laughs> I know. Cry. And Cheryl, yeah, Cheryl got him. We're gonna we're gonna need whenever there's a sensei panel, just like please. I know. That's what kids will do to you, man. I mean, oh, they just makes you realize how much time is lo you're losing, you know? And yeah. And, yeah. So, well. Oof. And I feel like our generation, we also put so much responsibility on ourselves and every interaction with we have with our children and what impact they're going to have for their future that it's all the more important for people in our generation to have that stability and to have this kind of time because breaking the cycles that have been perpetuated this whole time in parenting requires so much time and energy. It's not just about, hey, flip a switch. Now you're going to parent differently. It's not like that. It, it requires so much effort and to have energy to put in that effort we need to have our finances set up. So we're not working 20 hours a day and we have the energy left to put into doing what we, being a parent the way we want to be, which is not how some of us were parented. You know, our parents worked hard and they didn't know the impact things were going to have. Yeah. So, yeah, so I, I, I love that you brought that specific um, example. Amy is crying 
<laughs> Rosemary says, you're not alone, Eileen. You have me crying over here because I've done the same to my kids and then feel miserable later. That's one of the main reasons I'm here. Can I, can I just say something here? Guys, you guys, moms, parents, dads, like any guilt you guys have, this is what we're going to do. Take a moment here. Put, wrap it up in a box. Put the guilt in a box. Wrap, wrap, nice wrapping paper, imaginary. Put a bowl and like throw it out. <laughs> throw, it, throw it out the window. Yes, we're, everybody's doing their best given the circumstances they're in. That's what, that's what it's all about. Um, and oh, Anne, Anne says all the parents are crying. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, and <laughs> I'll tell you, uh, my mom worked really hard. Like she was a teacher because my dad passed away when I was five. She had a furniture business on the side. She rarely had time. Um, and it wasn't always very pleasant because she was stressed out and she was trying to make ends meet and she was still wanted to push me to like do my best. Never once did I feel like she didn't care about me. Yeah. Right. So if that makes you feel any better, if you look back when your parents worked hard and sometimes like they weren't the best that they could be with us, like we still knew they cared about us. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the so, parent face you put on. You you just have to like bury all the stress and, you know, and you put your parent face on, you do your your best and you love them. And and if, if you don't, they, they know you still care about them. A hundred percent. So, all right. Sorry to bring it down, guys. Who is no, that was inspiring to say? <laughs> <laughs> everybody, everybody in the, in Zoom is crying today. <laughs> um, all right. Well, I don't even know what my question was. <laughs> you, uh, you want me to take over, Paula? <laughs> yes, Cheryl. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, gosh, all of a sudden, like these, these are always so good because I think oh, we get goodness. different every time we do these. Um, just different um, aspects of our real estate journey come out. So, um, we you know we've talked about it a little bit about Burr itself, and I think it was was it Kendra who mentioned it. Like you're like Burr. Once you found Burr, is it Eileen? everything's kind of running together, but I know that it's all kind of the same for every one of us. What is it about this process that you, over the course of one property for you, Kendra, four for Rami, one for Alan, five for Eileen, do I have the numbers right? Okay. That you're still continuing to see, and Tasha, I can't remember now, two, is it two? Um, that you're still continuing to see how this can work to build the vision that we talked about in the very beginning. Um, can you talk to us about that? Because I think that could help the people who are joining us today, who are in all stages of the burr, right? They maybe are just before the B, <laughs> or maybe they're at the R, 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 wherever they are, they're at whatever stage they are in the burr journey. How are you seeing it still work for you? So I'd love to hear that. Rami, maybe you can go. You've been called on, Rami. <laughs> sorry. No, no, I like it. <laughs> so, uh, sorry, just just to recap, what, what was your question exactly? What, um, like, what... So, talking about Burr, sorry. <laughs> How do you still see Burr working for you? Because we've talked about, I mean, Kendra, I think, was, was the one who said that it was just, when you found it, you're like, this is it. How is it working for you, Rami? How is it working to help build the vision that you want? Why is Burr the right strategy for you? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh there's a lot about that. Um, <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's so, go. Yeah. Okay. Personally, we, Sarah and I, we like, we like challenges. Okay. And <laughs> we always, we always have the, like, the, we want to do the best. And I, we always remember what Talek says. This is the black belt of all real estate. Once you do Burr, you can do everything else. Yes. So I'm like, wow. Okay. So we're doing the, the, the top of, of all real estate. Um, what do you call it? Like um, all, all the, the, the real estate um, visions and, 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 and stages. So if you do Burr, you can do everything else. Or Okay, great. Now, once you get into Burr, the process itself, it's broken down. Thank you to, to you, Palik. And, and you break it down in a very good way that it's so structured for us. And it's, it's, it's addictive 
because <laughs> once you finish the first process or the first part and you, you see everything coming up, I'm like, okay, well, that's good. That's working. And then, but what about the first step? Let me do it again. And <laughs> you, you, the thing is so addictive. You don't wait until the last part to do, to do it again. No, you'd be like in the second or third one. And it's like, no, I like the first one too. Let me do it again. <laughs> so, because it's, and when you put it on paper, like it's, you're looking at the deals, right? And these deals are coming to your email, whatever you see on the MLS. And uh, you find one, you started on it, you put the offer, you got it, you start the rehab, you're doing the rehab, and now um, contractor is just taking its course. And these deals come in, and you keep seeing them like, wow, there's another one that's really good. I want it. I yeah. Pinterest, I want it. Yeah, exactly. I freaking and want to like, sell that diamond ring whenever I see that. <laughs> Why did I do that? I, I should have done that deal. Yeah. And the good thing about Burr also, each step, once you're done, there is a wording part of it. So when when you close on, on buying the property, I'm like, wow, I have a house now. That's amazing. Yes. And when you when you start like working on the rehab and when you've done the rehab, you see the progress between before and after. That's very rewarding because we all love before and after pictures mm -hmm. and makeovers. Like it's, it's, I think it's a science now. Like whenever there's a video or something like before and after, Alan will tell us. <laughs> 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 then we, and so that's the rehab. And then you, okay, when let's rent. Oh, it's exciting. Am, am I going to get a tenant or not? Like is, uh, um, either you're doing it or property management. Once you get the tenant, they sign the lease. That's so rewarding. And then, you get the first trend hitting your bank account like wow and then the refi that's the biggest one that's like <laughs> for me it's very nerve-wracking getting the appraisal but once you get it and you put your faith in it and you get that like appraisal and then and, and you refine it's like oh the property is stable now let's put you on the side and we'll do it again so it's it's really rewarding in every part of it that's how it works for us um, because it, it keeps Love us that. like going. Yeah. That is a that's dopamine. The first time. Yeah. Well, that's the first time I've ever heard of it. Like a, like a game, almost like yeah. a gamification. Oh, like yeah. after every step, it's like, Oh, here's my reward. Here's my prize. Rami, that was very good. That really. was that is not something I've heard before. I love that. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. so true. Like now that you say it, I'm like, you know what? Yeah, that's true. And when I'm between properties, I'm like, where's my next step? What's happening here? Yeah. I'm not yes. getting the hit. Yeah. Yeah. I so, love it. Um, and you know what? If you want to be addicted to anything, be addicted to building wealth. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but, um, anyone else would like to address that? Why is Burr still the right strategy for you? I'd like to say something. Alan. Yeah. yeah. Alan. So, you know, this sounds really obnoxious, but searching for homes, you have this primary residence mindset. So in my world, homes are like starting at 500 maybe 750 and then going up to some crazy number and anything below 500. I don't even know that existed, but because Pollock and Nietzsche created a program that got our eyes to open up and look at things, namely distressed properties in neighborhoods that are C and D or B and C, excuse me, and then create equity force appreciation through this process made this doable for all of us, all of us, uh, whether it's through MB Capital, whether it's uh, something, you've, some money you've come across, et cetera, et cetera. Now this process is doable and repeatable. But if your eyes, if you have blinders on and you don't know that there are properties less than 750, mm -hmm. well, then you're out of luck when it comes to a down payment. You're out of luck when it comes to rehabbing that $750,000 property. It's not going to happen. But if you now know that you can work in these neighborhoods and look for these specific properties and keep your rehab budget to a specific number or less. And, and borrow then, majority of the money so you can keep most of it. You can keep most of it and do this over and over. It was not possible. I was so confused about this process before mm -hmm. Pollock and Nidis program that I couldn't get started. Mm -hmm. I was lost. I was paralyzed by these high dollar amounts that all I could think about. I, I mean, I, I can go to a, a Burkhan for you guys and sell this program because this is amazing. 
it, if someone like me, who is a perfectionist, whose mindset keeps you from acting, who allows the firefighting of all day, a uh, little busy work to get in the way of your long-term goals, like I'm sure Tasha goes through every single day in her office. You can't get anything done because someone's knocking on your door and wants you to leave your office. This will allow you to break free from those roadblocks and those mindset roadblocks to get going. And doing it through Burr is something we all can do. And I didn't even know that. Mm -hmm. I had known about it through Bigger Pockets, but they don't give you the systems and processes that you need to get started. Amy Andrews was in our group this morning and she has laid down the foundation to start laying out, sending out offers. Kudos to you because without this program, you wouldn't have set up those base layers of um, building a business that you needed to do. And now that you've got it, you're gonna start firing out offers. You're gonna start getting properties. It's gonna happen. And it wouldn't have happened without this program. That's awesome, Alan. Thank you. Okay. Um, before we go, uh, and not we're, we're not going right now, but if you're watching, please drop your takeaways that you've gotten from our Sensei panel in the chat. And then I want a last word from everybody here in the panel. So I'm going to start with Tasha. Um, what has been your... <laughs> Tasha is like, wait, me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I'm going to keep talking so that you can think about it. Um, what, has been, what, it what has been your biggest learning moment and mindset shift. And I know you're super busy, like super, super busy. So I'm going to keep talking. What has been your biggest learning moment and mindset shift that you've, you've gotten over the last couple of years that you've been here in our community? Um, because uh, this is an incredible group and I know hearing this helps us. And sure. Yeah. Leave us with like an empowering pump us up note. <laughs> No pressure. Make this shift. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> Make this shift. You've got this. Yes. Uh, I might have to come back on the pump up note because I didn't think about that. But I'll tell you what my biggest sort of takeaway has been over. Um, over the my time in the program, and I'm gonna make up a word: corporize your real estate. Ooh. Um, Ooh. And what I mean by that is, you know, I know how to do the job of the lawyer and the professional and I was an engineer before a lawyer, so I get that part. Apply that same skill set to real estate. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, got it. You know, oh. and so that was a big mind shift. Sh shift. You know, I, I I learned a long time ago that I wasn't going to be hanging. You know, trying to fix things because that's not my gift. And if I'm doing that, like I won't be in the business a long time, right? And so focusing on, you know the strengths that I have in the, you know, my day job and applying that to the business is I think the big takeaway on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's that. awesome. Corporizing. Is that, that's what you said, right? Corp okay. Yeah. We're going to look that up. So Tasha <laughs> was an engineer yeah. and then she's an attorney, a mom of a toddler and an eight and a 80 year old and a real estate investor with a I don't know why I wrote all this down, but 4.1 million <laughs> portfolio. That is insane. Yeah. I love that. it. I love that. <laughs> okay. I'm going to go to Eileen. Eileen, what is your biggest mindset shift takeaway from being with this program? Um, there's so many. Um, something uh, Palak touched on. I think it was Palak. Um, my I'll parents. Take credit. <laughs> okay, it's you. You're great. Um, my parents were very much like, go to college, mm -hmm. get a job. Yeah. You know, you invest in your four hundred one k. Yeah. You know, you do the thing. You retire. So, like, it's like the if anybody's, I'm sure a lot of you have read um, Rich Dad Poor Dad. You know, and so I grew up in this like sort of poor dad mentality the dad that poor dad wasn't poor he had a, a good right. job but it was yeah. just like status quo you're not building generation generational wealth you are beholden to a boss who dictates what is happening with your time you don't have that freedom and so like I've always kind of wanted to be on the side of the rich dad like entrepreneurial entrepreneurial and like oh like I I my brain just goes that way and like not in the way that my parents taught me. I wasted too much time lurking in that world and sort of like 
the, that was my mindset shift of like, it's not just going to like fall on my plate. Like all of a sudden I'm in this kind of like entrepreneurial world where I can like dictate my own time. Like I have to make a shift to be in the rich dad world. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, it was like kind of, it's possible. You just have to shift your mindset and shift your actions too to follow that mindset because I just daydreamed about it for years and years and years. So that's just been like the hugest thing to me. And I will never go back to the corporate world. I just, I won't. I mean, it's nice not being there. Safe to say, you're like, we're different people, right? I mean, you're a different person in a sense. Oh, yes. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I'm so much happier and like the people around me, like they know it. <laughs> so yeah. I love it. I feel I love it. it. Yes. Thank yeah. you, Eileen. Yeah. Um, Kendra, how about you? What has been your biggest learning moment and mindset shift? Um, I'm like Eileen, a lot of them, um, uh, on a little different note, I'll say that because of this program and this community, um, I am not alone and you are not alone. And that's huge. Um, I, I'm a take charge person and I'm used to, you know, it's like, I don't depend on other people to, you know, to do things for me. And I've, I've, had I reach out to people. I, I have support through this community that I know for a fact is the reason why I'm able to do this. Because when you have questions and you don't know, first of all, Pollock and Nitti have put together a blueprint. And you know, if you study it and then you go back, and that is one thing I will say, um, reviewing, um, you know, my accountability partner reminded me when I was um in in the the closing time she's like you know, go back and 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 read the the um the watch the rehab things because then things start coming up and and you're in a different space now in you know in the process in your mind and you pick up these little nuggets that oh yeah yeah i need to remember this stuff but anyway i digress um but i think this community and the support um and um empowerment that it that it gains that it gives us it really helps us gain so much more than we could have on our own so it's just a little bit of a different takeaway but there, there's too many to you know I could take up my own sensei session with all of my, <laughs> my takeaways and that's but coming I'm, too that's coming uh, all right thank I'll, you. I'll, I'll get there but yeah thank you yeah. thank you amazing amazing Rami uh now to you biggest takeaway mindset shift um, I think, it, yeah, it's, it's just like what everybody said, Th this community helps a lot with the mindset that you can have. Um, it, it's for, for us was, um, seeing all these people, it, it just makes you feel comfortable getting out of your comfort zone. Uh, because what we're doing is outside of what we do and it's outside of our comfort zone. But when when we see people um, doing it, that means, OK, they can do it. We can do it and be comfortable saying that I'm not comfortable. <laughs> so it's it, it, it's it, it's just like that. Like any questions you ask, you can, people comment on it and they, they they help you with it. And if they don't know, they say we don't know. And, and that's very valuable. You, you're getting it from someone who is on the same level, different level. And uh, it's just like when you go, especially if you go on the Facebook and or like these sessions, each comment, each um, saying or talk, anyone is a little gem. Um, like we learn, we learn a lot still. Like uh, wh whatever level you are right now, you're still learning. Like, um, uh, we, we hear a lot and uh, it's just, I, I personally, I read a lot of books and I like to listen to people and each, I, I get a lot of lessons because I like to learn and each one of us give a different lesson and just gives you a perspective. It's like what you Palak said, like, you know how we travel and you see other people, oh, it's, there's a different world out right there. Um, it's just like each one of us have their own world and you just like experience exposed to that world and that gives you a lot <laughs> and and to me this is very valuable invaluable right Rami thank you so much yeah. and you Alan please uh share your takeaways my, mindset shifts my biggest mindset change is that mistakes are going to happen 
It's okay. Just make the mistakes, but keep going forward. Mm -hmm. You know, I see a lot of questions online on our Facebook group about what am I going to do about my bank account? They want my home address or what am I going to do about my LLC? This sounds wrong. And you get paralyzed being afraid of making mistakes. Go ahead and make the best move that you can. Keep moving forward. If something is actually wrong, you will fix it in the future because you can fix it and then just keep on going because I was so afraid of making mistakes. I studied real estate for five years and nothing happened. And to uh, bring it home, my wife said, well, you said that before, nothing's happened. And so I finally got on it. I joined this program, which was scary and things started to happen. Mm -hmm. Whether it was starting the LLC, meet, meeting an investor friendly realtor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It just started happening. And when things come up and I don't really know, I just take it on faith that it's going to work out and I do it. And so this guy said the rehab budget was 40. Okay. Sounds pretty good to me. The list looks pretty good. Scope of work. I looked at, I looked at the modules, checked it out. It seems pretty good. Let's just do it. Let's see what happens. I get done in a month. Just do it. Hmm. Make, hmm. take action steps and do it. You'll fix your mistakes. We've made plenty of mistakes. I'm going to make some more and uh, we'll recover. So that's the biggest mindset change. Don't be paralyzed by fear. This is such a good panel. I mean, I really, thank you all for, for joining us. I don't think we have time to go into a breakout, but um, but some of these um, some of these takeaways from folks who are watching are just amazing. Um, I just want to say my favorite part about yeah. this panel and every panel, but today specifically what comes to mind is I've seen you guys when you first started mm -hmm. and I've seen you go through your fears and your questions and how do I do this? Am I really ready? Like, should I pull the trigger? What about this one thing? What about, and then seeing you go past that and then go past something else and go past something else and be here today and share as investors, show up as investors and share your learnings with people who may have not known you then it's amazing to watch this transformation like that is the biggest gift that and it's it's a privilege to watch your journey so thank you for letting us be a part of it yeah thank you because i think it was eileen that just said it it's it's this confidence right it's like you're you are you become a different you do. You become a different person. You, know, you still have the same person. Um, you know, the same warmth and all. But uh, as far as the confidence piece, just, and so much something. when we know that we can, we have a say in how our life goes, and we we can control our future. I mean, what what confidence that builds in us, right? Like that is an yeah. amazing thing to have. Yeah. All right, Cheryl, take it away with the takeaways. Oh, let's see. So many. Amy said, I'm in this phase right now. And it's so scary seeing those who've been through this phase and are on the other side gives me courage. And I think that is um, that is the, the key, right? I mean, we know people who are joining us, maybe they're watching on Facebook or they're here in the room with us right now, um, that they're maybe they just started into the program. Like we know that. And it is scary. Right. I mean, scary. Yes. It's still scary for me. I mean, and then now it's like you're on to the next thing. Right. Kendra, you're looking for your next thing. Helen, you're looking for your next thing. It's like, you know, nothing's going to stop you. Uh, and if you have um, have questions, you come back here into the community. OK. Uh, Anna Randy says being a part of this community is so beneficial and a prime factor in each of us having success. Um, let's see. Oh, Rose said takeaway. Not sure how people are chosen for this group. But the Open Spaces team does an amazing, amazing job cultivating this community. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, let's see. Oh, Pradeep said, Burr builds the resiliency muscle. I like that. Mm. Eventually helps with other aspects of life. Firmly believe this. Yeah, have oh, you seen this so happening good. in other parts? Have you? Like, it's not, of course, a one-to-one -one thing. But have you seen this kind of um, maybe attacking our fears? that you see in other parts? Do you see that? Yes, absolutely. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing nods. Yes. I'm yeah. seeing nods. I know they're thinking it's good. It's so good. Um, oh, the yeah. black belt of real estate. Yeah, that was good. 
That was good. Was it, it was Rami that said that? Okay. You need to write that down. <laughs> um, yep. Yes. Let's see. Um, yeah, we're all crying with Eileen. Yeah, that was, mm-hmm. uh, um, that was good. Yeah. Good. Um, should I just add one last thing and then we can say goodbye? Yeah. So as we go through our journey, um, what I found is for those of us who are not trust fund babies, we were never taught to experience success. Experience of success is a whole different animal. And at every stage, I learned to experience it differently because you achieve different levels of success and you have things that come up that you didn't think were inside you, that you didn't think you would have to deal with. So as you move through your path and as you move through this journey and as you achieve smaller successes and then bigger successes in this path forward, when you hit a roadblock, just know that it's because we were not taught to experience success. I don't even know what is what it's going to be like to go beyond this. And if there's one thing that you're doing this for, let it be for that to experience success so you can teach that to the next generation. And that way, when they experience this level of success, they won't have that struggle. Mm, on that note, we're going to say note. thank you for joining us. Sensei Love panel, you thank you all for being a part of this and sharing your wisdom and your, uh, your takeaways and your mindset shifts. We thank you, thank you, thank you. We will see all of you next week with more success. Mm-hmm.